everybody. How are you doing today? Uh, my name is Griffin. We're going to get started in a little bit, but welcome to the developer days of Media APIs. We're going to get started pretty quickly. Uh, in the meantime, if you could all get started by signing up for a free Dolby.io account at the link over here, which we will also post in the chat. It's just dolby.io slash sign up. And uh, I noticed we had somebody connect, but just disconnected. But uh, for all reference, we will be uh, recording this. So you're going to be able to have access to this in the future. It'll be emailed to you. But we are going to get started very soon. Uh, if y'all could say where you're watching from in the chat, um, that would be awesome. So we can know that you're here, you're paying attention. This is going to be a small group of people. So this is going to be a very interactive session. So if you have any questions, feel free to let us know. As a quick little um, demonstration of how Livestorm works, you'll see on the right-hand side of your screen, you have this big bar where you have on the bottom the apps, the people, the polls, the questions, and the chat. The two that we're going to be using mostly today are chat and questions. Chat is going to just be how you can chat back and forth with us, though if you have any questions, we really recommend that you use the questions tab because that's going to make sure that we are keeping track of everything all together instead of it getting just kind of mixed up in the middle of things and we can all chat together. I'm joined today also by Brayden, who is also one of the developer advocates uh, for the team, who's going to be helping out uh, and kind of being the voice. So if you have any questions, he will help voice uh, them out to me and also just knows all the information. So if there's anything that I'm going to be able to answer, uh, he might be able to. Uh, so it looks like we got Berkeley and Los Gatos. We have two local people over here. And one more thing I do want to make sure that we're all able to do is one way that I like to make sure that we're all on the same page is by using the reaction feature of Livestorm. So if you go back over to the lower left side of your shop bar, you'll see a little smiley face emoji. Um, and actually, that's not the right one. If you go to the bottom center of your screen, you'll see the React center. Uh, and if you click on React, you can give uh, an emoji. So I'm going to ask for a thumbs up um, around the time. So if you could all give me a thumbs up right now so you can tell me that you have found it and you know where it is, that's going to show me that you are all good to go. And if you need uh, to pause at any time, just let me know in the chat and I will wait for your instructions. So um, if you all have created an account on Dolby.io, uh, why don't you all give me a heart eyes emoji? Let's try out that one. So we're not just doing thumbs the entire time. Yeah. Okay, cool. Looks like we got some hard ice emojis. So we will get started. So let me share my screen very quickly, where I will go over to the correct window. And we can uh, show off what's going on over here. So this is going to be a GitHub page, which we have shared. Thank you, Brayden, uh, in the chat, which I want you all to navigate to. And this is going to be the workshop that we are going to be using today. And the only thing you need to do is you need to scroll down and you need to click this button here that says click this to open the workshop in Binder, which is going to bring up a screen that looks a little bit like this. It might take a second for it to fully load in. But as a quick little explanation on what Binder is, Binder is a tool from the Jupyter uh, team, actually, that allows you to run Python environments uh, on the web directly from GitHub repositories, which is really, really cool and is how we're going to be doing this workshop today. It allows you to run Python code in line alongside a bunch of different markdown. So if you're somebody who prefers reading instructions rather than just listening and following along from my screen, you can do that as well. And also do this on your own time if you're a little bit distracted and doing multiple things at once. If you've all loaded into Binder, what we're going to do is we're going to go to workshop part one dot IPYNB. It might not be this wide, so you can make it bigger or smaller just by dragging like you typically would. But we're going to double click it and it's going to open up this. Oops, looks like we're getting an error. So let's try uh, that again and reopening the workshop in Binder one more time so I can do it live with you. So. What this is actually doing in the background is it's actually creating a container, uh, if any of you are knowledgeable about that type of architecture, which is really, really cool because it allows it to scale really far. So if we have a bunch of people working it all at the same time, it's going to work just the way we want it to. So let's try that again. We're going to double click workshop part one and And if we all are in here, why don't you give me a thumbs up so we can get started. 
And if you're running into any issues, uh, let me know and we would be happy to help you out as well. Uh, so I'm going to keep on going here. So we are within a Jupyter Notebook right now. So as you can see, we have a bunch of different markdown with some of these code blocks in here. As a quick little rundown on how we're going to get things working, uh, you're going to see this first block here, and it's going to give you instructions. So we can run blocks like this by pressing Control-Enter or Command-Enter, depending on what you're doing, where you want to click on the block you're going to be using, and you want to go either to Run on the top here, and I like doing run selected cells and don't advance, but you can also run selected cells um, if you want, which is going to be shift enter. I prefer control enter um, just because of the visuals. And let's all try that right now with this one where I'm gonna press it and you're gonna see this bubble on the top right go dark, which means that it's running. And when it's done, it should uh, be able to output this little file that we see going on over here. And what this is doing is it's importing IPython, which is a helper that's going to allow us to visualize audio files in native Python. And then we're taking this audio file that we have stored on the internet, and we are displaying it using that library. Um, you can listen it uh, on your own time. Unfortunately, Livestorm doesn't have the best audio sharing capabilities out there. But what you should be hearing is you should be hearing a woman on an airplane that has all that typical airplane background noise. That doesn't sound amazing. And what we're going to do with the Dolby IO Media APIs is we're going to enhance it and make it sound a lot better. So why don't you give me a thumbs up once you have that all working, or if you're running into any issues and a little bit confused about how Binder is working, uh, let me know in the chat. you don't see the audio file below the code snippet. So uh, I would make sure, once again, that you just click on the code block. You have to make sure that it's selected. And then we need to make sure that we're doing run. And then I like doing this one, run selected cells in advance. Sometimes it's going to take a while. I like taking a look at the little dark bubble we have over here, because when it is dark, that means it is busy. And then once it is light, that means it is done and idle. And it should pop up once that is done. Awesome, you got it. So let's keep on going. If you're running into any issues as well and a little slugging behind, uh, Brayden's keeping a look at the chat as well. So don't be too worried, but we're also happy to wait for you. Just let us know. And the first step now is we're actually going to go gather our credentials from Dolby. So what we're going to do is you've already signed up for a Dolby account. So we're going to go over to the dashboard and we're going to get our API keys. So I have the dashboard popped up. Oops, I need to log in again because it has expired. So let me go uh, pull up my credentials very, very quickly. Thankfully, I use a password manager, so I can just paste that all in. And it is going to pop up with the dashboard in a couple of seconds. And what we're going to do now is we're going to see the dashboard that looks just like this. You might have a different set of applications, but it doesn't matter right now because we're going to create a new application. What this is going to do is it's going to allow us to separate our API keys. So I'm going to collect add new app, and I'm going to type this one and just call it workshop. And I'm going to press enter. You can call it whatever you want. But what's really cool about this is that it generates a new set of API keys for every application. So you can keep track of what API uh, calls are being used by which application, which might be good for use case scenarios. If we click on Get API Keys on the API Keys section, it's going to show us this screen. The first thing it's going to show you is Communications APIs. We're not going to be using this today. That's for our other set of APIs that we have. We're instead going to scroll down to media APIs down here. And what we want to do now is we want to click on copy next to API key. We're not going to be using the secret today. Once we have that copied, we're going to go back over to binder and we're going to go into this next code block we have over here. And under API key, what we want to do here is we want to paste in the API key within the quotes that we just had saved over there. And under name, I'm just going to replace this with my name, 
And all that's going to do is it's just going to help us customize the output URL so we're not overlapping anything and it's all very clear. Um, this isn't really going to matter too much because it's all personal to your API keys, but it might help it be a little bit more clear for you. So once I have that put in there, I am once again going to run Control Enter. And once it is done, it's going to say API key and name set. So give me a thumbs up once you see that and you're all set up with your API key and your name. Awesome, seeing some thumbs up. We're getting rolling now. So what this has done is we've set two key variables. We've set the link to our original media file that we have on top over here as the original audio file. And we've set our API key as the API key. And then we're also setting up the name just to differentiate output. Now we can actually start calling the enhance job. So all this code is going to be adapted from the enhanced quick start that you can find at this link that I have shown over here at our documentation site. We're going to be showing off this part a little bit later as well. So don't feel like we're rushing too fast. Um, we'll all get to it. But what you need to know here is we have um, a code block of what it takes to call an API directly within Python. Uh, we're using the requests library, which is a native Python library that's used to make HTTP requests, though you will need to install that if you're in a brand new computer. We already are using it because we're in a Python virtual environment, so you don't have to worry about that here. But what you're gonna see here is we already have all the different parameters put in here, where we have the output URL, we have the body with the file um, and the output URL that we have going on that we just defined up here. And then we're calling the enhance URL and we're putting in the API key directly within the headers and then using the Python API requests uh, endpoint to actually call the request to the internet. So we don't need to change anything in this code. We're going to click on the cell and we're gonna do a control enter. It's gonna take a couple seconds, but if you've done it all successfully from now on, you're gonna see a job ID here. It's gonna be different because you're gonna be doing your own job, but you should be seeing a job ID that looks a little bit like this. And if you ran into an error, it will output an error instead. So if you have a job ID, give me a thumbs up. If you have run into an error, uh, tell us what the error is so we can help debug it for you. Looks like we got somebody typing, so let's make sure we're all together. Um, HTTP error traceback. So usually um, the issue with that is if the API key was not properly set, uh, yeah, unauthorized for URL. So I would go back up to the top code over here and make sure that you have the API key properly within quotation marks. The quotation marks are very important and that you did uh, the same thing where you clicked properly on here and he did the run and then run selected cells. It should say API key and name set once that is all done and set. Once you've done that, go back to this one and try running it again. Uh, another uh, reason why that might not have worked is if you use the wrong API key. Once again, you are not using the communications APIs, you are using the media APIs. And we're using the API key, not the API secret. So make sure you're using the proper API key as well. Can I show snippet four again? Um, I'm not sure what snippet four is. But um, the two snippets that are most important here are this one over here, where we're just setting the API key, and then this one over here, where we're just running the code. Nothing in this one should be changed. The only thing in this thing that needs to be changed is the API key section over here. a uh, bad request for URL. Uh, interesting. So once again, um, I just want to confirm that you're using the media API key, not the communications one. Um, and once we have that properly set, it should be working um, properly fine. Um, we also might just have Raiden help uh, debug with you uh, along the way, uh, because we're also going to be doing this over again very soon. This is just a nice little proof of concept. So uh, for the rest of you, what we're going to do is we're going to go over to step three on checking job status, where once again, um, it's going to be rebuilding the API. 
so that we are now running the check status endpoint we have going on over here. So we are still calling the enhance URL and we're still using the API key, but now we're adding a parameter for the job ID, which you can see is going to be what we have just outputted over here. And we're taking in that directly because we set it as a variable. So we should be able just to click on that code block and run it again, which should show you a code that looks like this, where the status is success, the progress is 100, and it just looks just fine in that area. So uh, let me know if you're able to get that. Just once again, no code changing going on. Uh, forgot to remove brackets. Yep, that's that's always <laughs> what it ends up being with code. Or there's one little syntax error. You got a little semicolon or a colon or closing your brackets. Uh, it ruins everything and drives you crazy. <laughs> so I'm glad you got that figured out. But uh, yeah, next step should take um, very little time as well. It's just running the next code block. So give me a thumbs up once you have a successful run. Yay, we're seeing some thumbs up. So now that we have a successful and done status, because this is all done asynchronously, so we need to make sure that the job is done before we try to download it, we can actually download the file that we have enhanced. So what we're doing here is we are just importing utility that allows Python to interact with the actual desktop environment that we're in. So this file section we interact with at the very beginning on the left, so it can download directly to there. And now we're actually accessing the output endpoint. We're putting in the API key and we're putting in the output URL as an argument we have going on here. And then once again, we are just doing some Python code to download it directly to uh, the same directory we're in right now. So we can run this code directly. It's gonna take a little bit of time because it's actually downloaded a file this time. And it's going to show us this downloading section. Once it's done downloading, you're going to see it pop up in the left sidebar. So mine over here, you can see, has now popped up. It is called workshop-griffin.mp4. And that's how you're going to be able to tell that it's done. And once it is done, you can go over to the next one and you can display that audio directly within there. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of time for it to load, but you're going to see the audio uh, interface exposed again, where once again, I suggest you listen to it in your own time, in your own direction, so you hear the full enhancing feature of it, where you're gonna be noticing that a lot of that background noise of the airplane has disappeared, the audio clarity is a lot higher, and just overall, it's a better listening experience for somebody who literally recorded themselves on an airplane airplane from their iPhone. So uh, instead of giving me a thumbs up, I'd love to hear uh, what you think about the audio file in the chat, or give me some hard eyes if you like it, some sad faces if you don't like it. Uh, if you don't like it, I'd love to know why. <laughs> but uh, we have now enhanced an audio file. We have been able to take something raw, send it through Dolby servers, and we've been able to actually hear it sound better. So now what we can do is we can move on to the next part of the workshop. Just as reference, you can take a look at what Python requests in IPython are if you want to know what those libraries are, but those are not related to Dolby. There are just some tools we use to help visualize this in the workshop. I'm now going to double check, double click on workshop part two. And this is going to bring us into a little bit more uh, deep understanding about what the actual uh, Dolby IO APIs are. So first of all, I want to briefly explain what an API is, where API stands for Application Programming Interface, which can be thought of as like a tool within a builder's toolbox if this is kind of a developer's toolbox. So when you're using an API, you can format and send data over servers, which will then be um, returned to the user, usually in the form of JSON, uh, in terms of the content it's actually sending. So you can work with somebody else's kind of application code instead of needing to build it yourself, which would be something like interacting with Dolby, or if you need to interact with Google or with Twitter, um, this would be a way for you to do that without having to just kind of one by one build and scrape out everything yourself. REST APIs are a specific type of API, um, which is just, just kind of the way that it's formatted. Uh, this is stands for representational state transfer. This is currently the most popular type of API out there. So it's going to be the most common one you're going to see. And it's all kind of about how it's built. So this is a screenshot of what the documentation looks like, which is an example of how it's built. But as a structure, you're going to see there's a few main things that we saw previously. The first one is the URL. The URL is the endpoint that you're actually accessing the API from. 
So for us, we accessed um, api.dolby.com slash media slash enhance. And this says we want to access the enhance API. There's also the output one that we used earlier and a few others that we're going to get on a little bit later on. Next are the headers. This is going to pass on things like content type, API key, and what it wants to accept. Most important one here probably is API key because that's going to be the credential that allows you to use the API in the first place instead of running into errors as we saw before. The content type is also going to tell us what we're expecting out of it. So JSON is just the format that it's going to be able to understand in terms of the data that it's reading. Next is the body, where the body is going to be the content of larger data. So this usually is where the customization parameters come in. So we've been using input and output for that to determine where the incoming file is and where we want to put the outgoing file. But you can also do things like customize how you want the enhanced output to look like. Um, customize um, what points you want to start and end. This is where you really define what's going to happen on the outside. And then we have the parameters. And this is just where you're going to put on URL parameters. So this is where we did the job ID. So it's literally appending onto the end of the URL we have over here what the job ID is so it can be read by your API properly. And finally, we have the method. So this is going to be an HTTP method. So it can either be a post, which is usually for sending data, get, which is usually for getting data, pudding, which is for replacing, uh, deleting, and so on. I definitely suggest you take a look at um, some documentation onto what a RESTful API is. And even further, I love looking at the Mozilla documentation if you want to learn more about HTTP uh, protocols in the first place. More specifically to Dolby IO, uh, our media APIs are just very um, specific towards the media world where we can once again set our variables. So I will go back to our dashboard we have over here, copy the media APIs and replace it exactly the same uh, as we did before. Uh, if you don't want to go back to your dashboard, you can copy it from part one. It's just a tab section up here and we're going to put in our name again. And this is just to set our variables once again so that we don't need to call our API key over and over and over again. Um, I'm not going to ask for a thumbs up here. If you run into issues, let us know. But I'm going to keep going because we've done that one before. So we're going to actually upload a local file this time. Instead of using a cloud-based URL, we can actually temporarily upload files to Dolby's servers. This is not long-term storage, as we'll get into shortly, but this is a very good option for people who don't necessarily have a cloud storage solution that they're already using to be able to use these files for. So we have a local file uh, in our directory right now called whitenoisedemo.wav, which we can play, once again, by running this IPython display file over here. Uh, this is actually something that Braden um, did for us, where it is demonstrating a bunch of white noise going on in the environment that he's been working on. And we can um, take this file and we can actually upload it directly to Dolby servers to use it in the APIs that we have going on right now. So what we want to do is we want to take it with an API call. So what we have is we are taking the file path of the white noise demo.wav that we have right here. And we are setting the input file the same as we did before. Uh, this is using Dolby temporary storage. So this is always going to start with DLB colon slash slash that says we're using Dolby temporary storage. And then we are calling the input to URL API, which is how we're actually going to determine that we're creating uh, a link that we want to store this in. We need to set the API key once again, and then we're declaring the body the response as a post, and then we are uploading it over here with a put um, function over here. So we're literally putting this file content within the URL that we just created with that API call. So let's run it right now. So I'm going to do, once again, a control enter. And it's going to say uploading white noise demo .wav to this uh, temporary link that we have over on here. We're going to be able to access it with this DLB colon slash slash in input griffin.wav. And we should be able to use it for future um, stuff that we have going on here. Um, this is all stored in an isolated location that you can only access with your API key. We encrypt it in REST and in transit. So it is secure and it is audited to prevent unauthorized use. But this storage is temporary and will be removed within 24 to 48 hours. So make sure that you're using it very promptly. Otherwise, it will disappear forever. So don't use this as a way to 
kind of store things uh, against anything we want to be using. We're going to be using this for some of the other Dolby I.O. media APIs we have going on here. But you can also uh, note that you can save files directly to your cloud provider of choice, such as AWS S3, Google Cloud Storage, um, Azure Blob Storage, um, Dropbox and Box also work as well, uh, where we have a docs section to teach you how to do that directly, where you don't need to actually download every complete job. It's going to be able to upload it directly to that service for you without needing to do that extra step. So why don't you give me a thumbs up once you have um, received this uploading demo um, code that we have going on over here before we get on to the next step. And once again, if you are confused and need anything clarified, it's not just running into issues. I am also happy to slow down and explain a little more about what's going on as well. I saw some thumbs up. So what we're going to do now is we're going to talk a little bit about Enhance. So in part one, we called Enhance without using any parameters. But as I mentioned before, we do have some parameters that you can use to fine tune it. Without any parameters, it's going to try to automatically adjust it based on what our algorithms kind of think is what's going to be best. Though we also put this power in your hands as well, where we have the ability for you to do things like reduce noise, uh, level speech and loudness, we are able to remove the P's that you're popping all the time and the hissing from the S's that you have. And we can also define, once again, the input, the output. And we also have a bunch of different predefined things. So if you're working in a conference section or working on a mobile phone, these are going to be predefined uh, things. So you don't have to fine tune every different thing if you're not an audio engineer and don't necessarily know what they mean. But you do have the ability to fine tune those directly if you want as well. So um, we can keep on going a little bit further down. And we're going to see the enhanced section we have going on over here once more. And what this is doing is it's going to be showing off some of these parameters that we have decided to use. So. It's the same thing we saw before, but as you can see, the body is a lot larger now, where we're doing things like uh, putting in max amount of noise reduction, putting in a hum filter, isolating speech, reducing the amount of S's that we have, reducing the amount of popped P's, and we don't care about noise clicks. There weren't any noise clicks that we heard in the audio, so we're ignoring that. So we're going to be seeing how this is actually going to affect the file that we used earlier. So we're going to do one more, a control enter, and we should be seeing a job ID once again if we have done everything correctly. This is a very short file once again, so we can check the status very quickly. It's going to give us running, so sometimes it takes a little bit of time, but if I do it one more time, it probably should be done by now. There we go. And we can download the input exactly the same as we have done before where this time it's going to show off as white noise demo dash enhanced WAV. So there it is. We can see seconds ago, that is the new one. And you can give it a listen and also run the original side by side if you want to take a look at that. But uh, why don't you go run through all those steps? I went through those quicker because those should be all very familiar. And uh, let me know uh, the differences you hear from the listening between the original and the enhanced section that we just did with this API call we have over here. If you need any help repeating some of these steps again, I went through them very quickly. So I'm happy to slow down and help any of you out if you need a little bit more attention as well. Great, I'm seeing some thumbs up. And now, oh, OK, we still have somebody chatting. Doing well, great, love to hear it. So that one's all been enhanced. So now let's check out using another API. So here we have Diagnose. Diagnose is still in a beta, though uh, it is still very much production ready. We are just always iterating and trying to perfect our algorithms as much as possible. Diagnose is uh, all about trying to provide media information. So instead of trying to fix it for you, it tries to tell you about it. Because sometimes people want to fix it themselves, not let a machine do it. We still want to give you the power to kind of see what might be going on. So we give you an audio quality and a noise score, which kind of gives you a rating on how 
um, good or bad based on the different parameters that we have decided, kind of from the enhanced stuff we've seen above, that your audio file is reaching. And it also tells you about which sections might have any clipping going on, how loud something is, and even try to classify what type of content it actually is. It's a really fast API and also doesn't require a file to be downloaded because it's just outputting in analytic JSON output that we have going on over there. So the results are actually in the same call as the status. Uh, you can read all about the audio quality and kind of see how we define it. Um, we have a very awesome team of audio engineers working at Dolby who have helped define a lot of this. So if you want to get a little bit more understanding in more detail about how we define all of that, definitely check out our documentation link over there. But for now, let's go and take a look at the code. So this is going to be the same type of um, code we saw for starting the enhance. But instead of enhance, we are calling the diagnose endpoint over here and we still have the input URL. So let's once again do a control enter over here, and it's going to give us a job ID. And what we're doing is we are um, just taking in the same input URL of the white noise demo. That's what we're gonna be using for the rest of this um, workshop section we have going on over here. And we can just check the results over here. So it should go very quickly. And as you'll see, we are, um, getting a response that looks a little bit different. So one reason of this is because I am once again using a display thing that's gonna help read JSON a little bit better than typical, um, which is gonna allow you just to um, collapse and open. This is going to be what the JSON output actually looks like. So you can open and close all these different parts of the result where you're gonna be able to get things like the media information, which is gonna tell you about the audio codec, uh, the number of channels and the sample rate and the duration and all of that. Um, and it's also going to tell you things about the audio quality score. So you can open up the audio object, and it's going to tell you the quality score. We got an average of 3.5 out of 10, so not great. Um, but then it also tells you things like the worst segment, what times in the audio actually happens in terms of uh, when it is as bad as possible. And it's going to tell you noise score as well on average, so not great there either. There's a lot of white noise in this. That's kind of the point of it. And it's also going to tell you some more information. So we can see any clipping in this event. Um, we can see the loudness. And we also saw that it was a speech type of thing. Uh, we didn't hear any music in it. Uh, we didn't hear any silence in it. Uh, and we heard uh, speech for about 75.9% of it with all the different uh, events. So we didn't hear any plosives or sibilants going on over there as well. Um, this is going to give us a very nice amount of information about what's actually going on with that file. And an example of how you might be able to use these APIs in a real world setting is through something like this kind of flow chart where you have uh, an audio file and you're sending it through the diagnose API and you are going to be able to evaluate the quality score. If it's good enough, you can say, awesome, we're going to distribute this. But if it's not good enough, you can either send it through enhance or go to an audio engineer and try to fix it. And the whole idea here is to just kind of determine what the ideal quality score is in terms of what your needs are. So for example, a casual content creator is not going to have as high as a threshold as a professional audio engineer. So a 10 is not something that everybody should be kind of looking up to. A 10 is like, there are zero flaws with this audio whatsoever. So that is not going to be the expectation, but trying to get as close to what your self-defined uh, kind of expectations are for that quality. Any questions in regards to what the Diagnose uh, API does for you? If not, you can give me a celebration reaction and we can keep going as well. I love changing up the reactions. It makes it a little bit more fun. So a quick little note on other languages in our API reference. So um, there's a few different ways to do it. So curl uh, is a very common way to do it that is kind of more, um, I want to say language agnostic, but that's not really the right term for it. Um, it's a protocol that you can do within your terminal that's designed to transfer data using different network protocols. And it's kind of the de facto way to try out an API call, um, which you can run through your terminal or you can run it through PowerShell. 
We also support a bunch of other different languages, any language actually, that just allows you to make an HTTP call. So the vast majority of modern languages out there, you can use directly with our APIs. And we actually provide sample code for the vast majority of them um, inherently. So we have curl examples, we have JavaScript, Python, Ruby, PHP, Go, Swift, um, and you can even uh, work on our Postman collection that we have linked over here if you want to try out uh, these directly within uh, to find workspace to help you do it and customize different parameters directly within here as well, where you can do things like the start enhancing um, API call is going to allow you to do exactly what we did before and be able to work directly within it. So it's a very nice tool and I highly recommend you check it out if you want to play a little bit more with what APIs actually sound like. Um, second of all, uh, make sure you keep your API keys private. So I showed all of you my API key. I'm actually going to be deleting that application at the end of this, which is another good reason why uh, we create new applications so we can easily rotate API keys. But in case this is something that is concerning for you in terms of you're making a publicly accessible app, we also have the option for you to use OAuth2 tokens instead where it will automatically expire. And that's where you're going to be able to use your secret to generate a temporary token that still allows you to authenticate. We do highly encourage you to rotate your API keys often anyway, and to have an API key for each application on your dashboard so that you're able to separate things out and not rely on one API key for every separate project that you have. So if it gets leaked by one person, every single thing you have is leaked, making sure that you can keep as many things flowing no matter um, how kind of interconnected they all are in the end. So um, with that little uh, warning in place, we're going to continue on to the transcoding section, which transcoding is all about converting media of particular file types to others and um, transisting uh, video media to different resolutions. Um, you can add things like um, overlays, um, pre-cards, postcards, uh, changing audio to different sample rates or bit rates. Uh, it's a really, really cool tool that allows you just to kind of transform media into the proper ways that you need it to go automatically. Um, one very um, popular way to do this is to take a video file and translate it to something like an HLS format so that you can uh, scale it much harder. Like you don't want to distribute a large MP4 file to everybody, but if you're sending it as a stream, uh, everyone's able to download it um, at the right speed that works for them at the right quality that works for them. So let's check out some code. In this one, we're going to make a transcode request to convert an MP4 video to a wave audio file. So once again, we're going to be using um, an audio file uh, very similar to the one we used of the woman on an airplane. So you'll notice that this is an MP4 file. So this is actually a video attached to it. If you want to visit that link, you don't really need to worry about what the video content actually has, but it is actually a video. But what we're going to be doing here is we are going to be taking in a URL. This is going to be the transcode endpoint, putting in the API key, and we're going to be using the body. So you can see that it says inputs, plural, with an S. This actually accepts multiple inputs if you would like, where it allows you, once again, if you want to stitch multiple videos together, um, you can do it just directly like that. And we also have outputs. So if you want to convert it to multiple different formats all at once, you have the ability to do that as well. But for now, we're just going to be using one input and one output just to simplify everything. What we're doing is we are defining the destination, once again, as a Dolby temporary storage location. And we're setting the kind to WAV because we want to convert this to a wave audio file. Let's do a control enter, and it should output a job ID once we are all good. And then it's going to be the same workflow of checking the status and downloading the output. So once again, control enter on the status. We have success, so we're ready to download. And then we can go back to downloading the output and control enter and wait for it to download. It will be called airplane example.wav in the sidebar once we are done downloading it. And there it is for me up here, airplane example.wav. And this one, we're not changing the quality of anything. So you don't need to listen to this file, but I just have it there. So you can actually tell if the file exists or not if it's hard for you to tell. Uh, if it doesn't show up anything, the file's not done downloading yet. But if it does show up, it is all good. Let me know if you have any questions or issues. So um, 
Yeah, so can I show the first code snippet again? Of course. So the first code snippet is going to look just like the ones we have worked before with Diagnose and Enhance, but instead we are working on transcode and we're using inputs and outputs. We should not be changing any of the code that we have in here so far. We just want to be running it right now. Awesome. So that's just a very simple way to demonstrate how we converted it from a video file to an audio file. Um, but you have the ability to do it in a bunch of other different ways. Um, if you have any questions about Transcode, let me know. Otherwise, we will continue on if you send me some uh, scared face emojis. Yeah. See, I'm trying to have a little bit of fun right now. It's close to the end of the day over here in the Pacific time. So let's have a little bit of fun. So we do have some additional APIs. Um, we have Analyze and Analyze Speech, which are uh, very similar to Diagnose. Um, they're in a way bigger um, because they're able to kind of break out many segments of the audio for quality scores. And for Analyze Speech, it's even more specific. It goes even deeper on speech particularly. So it's able to actually um, determine different speakers and be able to say who is saying what uh, and how much time each of the different speakers are going on. And it shows micro-level audio defects and insights. So it's uh, a little bit slower than Diagnose because it's able to kind of process even more information and does provide an output that you need to download. Um, it's just one of the text JSON output, but is a little bit more intense. Um, we aren't going to be covering that in this workshop right now, but if you want to learn more, definitely check out the documentation and reach out to sales if you're very interested in terms of all of that. Additionally, we have Music Mastering, which is now recently in uh, general access, which we're very, very excited about. Music Mastering is like Enhance, but more music specific. So Enhance is very focused towards spoken words, so podcasts, vlogs, are very, very common uses for all of that. Music mastering is for um, musicians and music. So we have the ability for you to pick between multiple different music styles that it's often separated by genre. And we are here offering you professional sounding audio masters that still keep the creative intent intact. Uh, this isn't meant to replace going to a professional studio and paying um, an audio technician to master it yourself, but this is more for a smaller scale, more indie musician or bedroom artist who wants to master something a little bit better, but doesn't necessarily want to go full out in terms of that music mastering. If you're interested in music mastering, definitely reach out to us. We'd love to hear about your experiences. Um, we have a product page, we have documentation on it, and also definitely check out our music mastering partners where we actually are working with SoundCloud and United Masters to provide this as a service for musicians that also don't want to code as well. Um, any, any questions about um, Analyze or Music Mastering? Otherwise, once again, we're not going to show off all the different APIs we have today in, in this workshop. We are getting a little bit low on time, but I want to make sure that uh, if you have any kind of burning questions, I'm here to answer them for you. And it doesn't look like anyone is jumping out of their seats to ask anything. Um, and then we also like to talk about uh, webhooks and callbacks. So as you'll notice, um, or have noticed, a lot of the different uh, times we have checked for the job status manually, where we ran the check status uh, command to see if it was done or if it was still running. If you prefer not to manually pull for that to be completed, you have the ability to use webhooks and callbacks instead, which are very, very popular inside of the API workspace, where you will need to have a webhook URL that has a service that's actually listening for this. So there's a lot of different um, web services um, that can use this, such as Zapier or Slack, that provide that as a service, or you can build your own application on something like Express, Django, Rails, uh, whatever your language is actually using, that's just a web server that's actively listening for something on the URL that you define. And it's going to send um, a JSON response to the URL when the job is done and say, hey, this job is done, here is the response. So you can fully automate that process instead of having to manually do everything yourself one step at a time. This is really good once you start scaling out these jobs to a much larger service and allows you to have a much easier time um, just kind of making your application self-sufficient. 
Uh, to read more, once again, check out our documentation page. I'm going to show this off a little bit more in detail right now, um, where you can go take a look at all the different aspects. So here we have the web hooks and callback section, where it's actually going to allow you to, uh, in whatever language of your choice, um, be able to create um, a webhook by determining your webhook URL. We have decided here, and then actually assigning that to the application. Uh, these are per application. So it's another reason to create multiple applications because you can only have one webhook per application and also outputs the notification. So you're going to see all the different properties where it's going to give you the job ID and it's going to give you the webhook URD, um, all the different paths, API versions, what the status, and any information that might be useful for you to be able to do something um, for the ROM. You can see all the different guides that we have in the documentation section as well over here in areas such as audio quality, which I have uh, mentioned before in terms of things like audio quality score. And you can see some getting started guides if you prefer to do things on your own time um, just by clicking on the API key guides. So if you want to go to enhance, the enhance API has a getting started guide that you can reference just by clicking on the box. And it's going to run through a lot of the code that should look very similar to the code that we did in this workshop today. If you also go back up to the top, you can go over to the API reference, which is going to show you how all these different APIs are built. So once again, we can click on Enhance, and we can see how this Enhance was actually built and see what all the different body parameters are and what they actually mean if you change them. And also in the responses, you can see what the valid response is going to look like and what they all mean when you see that in the body itself which can be very useful for an API like Diagnose, where the response is going to be uh, a little bit more complicated. Uh, sorry, and get Diagnose results. It's going to be a little bit more complicated. So you have all the different media information that we saw um, earlier before, and it tells you what all of them are actually about. To uh, recap, we went over a few things today where we went over the Enhanced API, where we are able to reduce noise and isolate uh, the speaker from the white noise kind of worst case example that we had over there. We had the Diagnose API where we got the quality scores of that same file and we learned more about the media and how those actually defined. And then we also used the Transcoding API where we learned a little bit about media streams and also converting to different codecs. We briefly touched about what the Analyze and Music Mastering APIs were and discussed things like authentication best practices, webhooks and callbacks, and just good practices for security and maintaining a good WIO media uh, kind of workspace that we have going on over here. If you want to go back and try this again on your own time, this GitHub repository is public and will be live forever. It's the same one that we started with. So you can go do this all again on your own time. But that's it for this guided, um, very quick workshop we have of the media APIs. So if you have any questions, um, please let me know right now while you still have us here. Um, Braden's also happy to help out as well. But in the future, um, definitely reach out to our support team at support.dolby.io or uh, reach out to us on Twitter at twitter.com slash dolby.io. And we'd love to uh, help you out and just even see what you're building. Show us what you've done as well. Um, that's all we have today. I'm going to leave a little bit of time for any follow-up questions at the end, but, um, if there isn't anything else, we will call it there. Would love to learn more about the webhooks in the future. We'd be happy to talk more about that with you too. Um, definitely reach out to support if you have an actual application that you are building and want some help with, and they will be able to directly help you with that application. But if you just want to learn a little bit more about it uh, as well, um, you can um, follow us as well on Twitter. Um, my Twitter, you can see on this card uh, over here, my Twitter is at Wing of the Griffin. Uh, I'm happy to chat with anybody about what they're building as well and just kind of learn about what people are building. But the support team would also be very, very happy to help you um, in regards to all of that. Yeah, thank everyone for joining us. I hope you had a good time. Uh, we also are going to be having a communications workshop uh, tomorrow morning in Pacific time um, that you can attend as well, which we would be happy um, to see some more faces at as well if you want to learn more about some of the other APIs that we offer as WIO, because this is only one third of it. <laughs>